we had the blacklist uh, heavily upon us, and it was uh, we really couldn't do anything there. Some of us who uh, who sympathized with the those who were blacklisted uh, un uh, unfairly, we thought. I mean, uh, if, if I knew someone and and could not believe that he was trying to overthrow the government, I did not feel that there was any reason to blacklist him. And uh, uh, it was hard for everyone. And the only thing, the best thing we could do, the only thing we were really able to do, because the networks denied that there was such an existence. You know, they, they just flatly denied it. Even though they made you telephone somebody and say, can I hire so-and-so? And you got an answer said, no, you may not. Did you personally have to do that? We did. I didn't, but somebody on the staff did. And I don't, no one ever knew who answered the other. And I mean, you know, it was all... Who were you actually, or who were they actually calling? Well, they called a certain office, and I think it was a fictitious name, I don't think. And, uh, but the networks denied. And, you know, it was such a silly dance we were all playing. But we did do a service, I think, in telling people who suddenly couldn't believe that they weren't work, why they weren't working, having worked for a long time. Don't bother trying to because you're not going to be hired. And they knew that that meant what it meant. And one poor guy just found out, it took him a year or two, and all his savings and everything, to, he went to Washington to find out that there was another man, the same name as his, who indeed was on the blacklist, who had uh, had a, a, a record of whatever puts you on the blacklist, and that he, this innocent man, was paying the price for it. And I said to him, well, I guess there's just another guy named Harry Davis, very ordinary name. He said, but the terrible thing is, that's not my name. I had this name, and he told me some Polish or Lithuanian name, long, difficult name, and he said, when I came to New York, my friends <laughs> said, you should change your name, because that's not good for the, for the business, you know, not good to change. And so this poor bastard, whose name wasn't that name even, and so we did get him cleared. You know, mm -hmm. We got him cleared. Did you personally feel threatened by the McCarthy era and the uh, political climate? Uh, no, not time? personally, because I was a non-joiner of everything and all of that. But I certainly was threatened in my own heart. I thought it was, it was a terrible thing to go through. I mean, really terrible. We saw so many people who, you know, had had a perfectly nice little life and working and doing everything. And for no reason, absolutely no reason, were, were you know, they'd gone to the funeral of somebody or they'd gone to a, some meeting. Or, I, mean, I mean, that crazy grocer or whoever he was in Schenectady or wherever. I mean, everybody was so nervous then, so jumpy, you know. It was just a terrible, terrible time, and great wrongs were done. 